Because I feel stupid. This computer had a failing hard drive and they waited until the operating system would not boot to let me know. As you can see, it's an older machine. <clears throat> so what I want to show you is after I used um, NTFS clone and some other partition stuff to get the hard drive cloned over from the uh, old hard drive to the new uh, NTFS clone with the dash dash rescue parameter. What I'm doing now, now that I've cloned it minus all of the files, um, all of the bad spots are just toast, I've still got the old hard drive in. Now this command is how I'm finding what files are bad. And you see I started at the root of the drive here, but then I decided well, the main problem here is that we don't boot and we need to get this thing going because this is actually a crucial computer for a business. So I did a clone even though normally I'd do a reinstall. So what we've got here is I'm in the hard drive that um, I was cloning from that has the bad spots. Find finds all the files under the Windows directory. See we're in the drive. Find Windows type file so this produces a list of every file pipe it into a loop while read x do cat read x just takes every file path and puts it into the variable x cat x which reads x and then outputs both the contents and the error messages to dev null which means it doesn't actually output anything to the terminal all i care about is whether it succeeds or fails so the pipe pipe is or uh, or you know on failure if that command returns failure cat which reads the file beginning to end echo the file name so it'll tell me the file name on the terminal and then done closes up this while loop but what we do is we take that echo and we pipe it through t append and I make a file called badfiles.txt which means it gets echoed out to the terminal and gets put in a text file that I can refer to if say it scrolled off the screen and I change terminals so these are some of the bad files and I can see now why they were getting a blue screen about an unexpected IO error we have the Windows user interface MSXML6 which is used by several programs. I don't know about phone OM, I don't think that's crucial. But then this is this is a driver that uh, I think it goes to a security processor. This is a driver that's going to not work and that's probably the main cause of the blue screen. So this computer was pretty crippled um, if this was not um, bad but these were it already probably couldn't run several things properly so I'm gonna extract these four files from another Windows 10 machine that's probably a, a similar build number to hobble this thing back together and get them back up and running immediately but I wanted to show you how I used some simple Linux commands to go through and figure out what files were bad like I said, it's important that you do this on the bad hard drive because when these file reads fail due to the hard drive being bad, you'll get a list of the file names. If you did this on the good drive, like up here, I've got this new drive here. Yes, it's a Seagate. Please feel free to laugh at me. I've got this new drive here. If you read it on the new drive, the data didn't copy over because it was bad but the new drive doesn't have a problem it doesn't have all these bad spots that are indicated by this smart data here so because the new drive doesn't have bad spots and the old drive does you're going to have a situation if you try to use the new drive to find these where you get nothing because the new drive doesn't have the problem um, the old drive is the only source of information about what's failed on the old drive so keep that in mind. Anyway, there's a good chance that nobody's going to see this or really be helped by it. But So if you are helped by this video, I would really appreciate it if you would let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. The computer, after I copied the correct files, it turned out they had a 32-bit version of Windows 10. Uh, build 1803, which I found out because I fixed the recovery environment and booted into it and got its version number. 
you see this 17134 here, that's build 1803. I was able to graft on some uh, replacement DLLs from Windows 10 1709, and as you can see, it's now uh, up to the point that I can fire up Command Prompt. This is PowerShell, but I ran CMD from it. Um, and DISM, this, this repair command, DISM slash online slash cleanup image slash restore health, and we'll see if it can patch up any remaining problems by itself. The next feature update will fix everything anyway. They uh, should be getting 15, uh, 1809 relatively soon. And once that comes down, it will fix all those busted files. Um, so I may just go ahead and force the next feature update rather than trying to patch everything up. I don't really want to go dig up a 1803 installation ISO or any of that nonsense if I can help it. But it's a success and I thought you'd like to know. Okay, one final update in this saga. Because I feel stupid, the Windows 10 64-bit files didn't work. <clears throat> but um, here's the thing, you see, Windows 10 64-bit has 32-bit system 32 files under a folder called SysWow64, so yeah. I had the files the whole time, and I feel dumb. But I copied them now and it works. And everything's cool. The end.